Hi, it's Chris, and here's a 14-minute overview of Medicare Open Enrollment and Medicare Advantage plans. As you know, every year there is an annual Medicare Open Enrollment that runs from October 15th to December 7th. During this time frame, beneficiaries can modify their coverage options or start coverage options. For example, if they have Medicare Part A and B, which is original Medicare, they can switch to Medicare Advantage plans. Medicare Advantage plans are known as Medicare Part C. Medicare Part D is prescription drug coverage. So one of my first recommendations is that make sure that your staff and your facilities understand the difference between Medicare Part A, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part C, and Medicare Part D. I'm going to give you about 15 handouts and those handouts are listed here. These handouts include the PowerPoint presentation from CMS's two-day Medicare Open Enrollment Seminar that occurred on 9-25-2024 and 9-26-2024. In addition, I have the Medicare Handbook for 2025. I have a PowerPoint for those under 65 years of age that can acquire their Medicare coverage. I have the CMS Medicare Prescription Payment Plan, the special report by the Centers of Medicare Advocacy, which gets into the Medicare Advantage and the impact on beneficiaries. In addition, I have given you a handout with Medicare Advantage overpayments. It's a OIG report from 2022. Another handout is the OIG audit of August 2024. In addition, the Medicare Communications and Marketing Guidelines from February 9th, 2022. In other words, what can a skilled nursing facility say to a beneficiary and what can they not say? As well as what the OIG strategic plan is regarding managed care and as well as the Medicare Advantage plans write up both in Word and PDF that I will be discussing today. You will also receive open enrollment narrative write-up that I'm talking about today in Word and PDF. I will also include the Medicare Part A and Part B forms, as well as this video. The OIG, which is the Office of Inspector General, that is the entity of the government that gets involved when they detect fraud, has a link and a website discussing Medicare Advantage plans. There's a video that I have given you the link to. I have taken the video and added in commentary from the Center for Medicare Advocacy, which is the nonprofit organization in Connecticut, driving force behind the Jimmo Sibelius Improvement Standard Settlement. This slide is the PDF version of the Medicare Open Enrollment Write-Up giving you information to share with your staff, with beneficiaries on the details of the open enrollment process. At the end of the document, you will see a step-by-step -step process for the facility to use, to have, to prepare, to oversee, and track residents in the facility that have coverage, do not have coverage, and what you can do to help them enroll. Now, to be clear, the 2025 Medicare original, traditional Medicare rates have not been posted yet. But I offer you this document to take, to change, to use, modify. Now what I'm going to do is play the video from the OIG website and you will see inserts in there from the Centers for Medicare Advocacy. One concern is that when plans agree to cover the cost of your care for a fixed monthly payment, some plans might improperly limit your access to care to maximize their profits. If you get less health care services, the plan gets to keep a larger share of the fixed monthly payments. 
In July of 2024, Humana, the second largest Medicare Advantage plan provider, announced plans to shed over 200,000 enrollees in what their CEO called unprofitable markets while also reducing benefits. Despite these cutbacks, Humana's projected margins for 2025 are expected to rise, setting them on a path to their long-term target of at least a 3% profit. The PNP, the Physicians for National Healthcare Program, wrote a paper called Our Payments, Their Profits, in an attempt to quantify the overpayments in the Medicare Advantage program. They estimate that in 2022, the Medicare Advantage plans overcharge taxpayers by approximately $88 billion per year. Since 2007, Medicare Advantage enrollees has exceeded the 50% mark, meaning that less than 50% of Medicare beneficiaries are using the original traditional Medicare program. This paper also talks about upcoding with the average risk score 20% higher than traditional Medicare. Here is the attachment that you will see. This is the report and it is a PDF that you can download as well. OIG work has found that some plans inappropriately deny authorizations for services or deny payments for services. This is called stinging on care and these inappropriate denials can interfere with your timely access to necessary healthcare services. Also, Medicare will increase the fixed monthly payment when plans provide coverage for enrollees who may be sicker than expected. These are called risk adjustment payments and are designed to make sure Medicare Advantage plans are paid appropriately based on the health status of enrollees who may need a little more care due to significant health conditions. Some Medicaid programs make similar payment adjustments. The root of this issue lies in risk adjustment. Because the Medicare Advantage plan's payment system is designed to encourage plans to enroll sicker individuals by adjusting payments based on diagnoses, there's a strong incentive for plans to report enrollees as being sicker than they actually are. In fact, there is substantial evidence of plans reporting diagnoses that were never substantiated or treated. One of the well-known concerns associated with Medicare Advantage is the potential to gain the risk adjustment payment program. Some insurance plans may inappropriately receive more money than they should because they overstate how sick their members are. In some cases, plans may offer you a free health risk assessment and then use that assessment to make you appear sicker than you are or diagnose you with conditions that you don't have or haven't received treatment for. A July 2024 investigation by the Wall Street Journal uncovered that Medicare Advantage plans insurers received nearly $50 billion between 2019 and 2021 from diagnoses added by insurers themselves for conditions that no doctor or hospital had treated. Furthermore, a follow-up report from the Wall Street Journal on August 4, 2024, revealed that in-home visits designed to unearth more diagnoses from patients in their homes accounted for about 30% of the total overpayments analyzed. So what can you do to protect yourself? The Centers for Medicare Advocacy did a special report, which is another attachment. The key takeaways in this report are, number one, do not allow Medicare Advantage plans to control the narrative. Number two, if Medicare Advantage plans claim that they must cut benefits or exit markets due to reduced payments, pause and consider the facts. The facts include that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services actually increased payments to Medicare Advantage plans for 2025 and that the Medicare Advantage plans manipulate the risk adjustment system to boost profits while viewing the delivery of necessary care as a problem. I urge you to read the Centers for Medicare Advocacy report. 
It talks about how the reshuffling comes amid growing evidence of inappropriate payments to the Medicare Advantage plans. And according to this report, research by the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission found that upcoding and favorable selection allowed Medicare Advantage plans to receive $83 billion or 22% more than what Medicare would have paid had these enrollees been in traditional Medicare. If you're enrolled in Medicare Advantage or Medicaid Managed Care, first, be informed. Read your plan's materials carefully and understand what is covered. For example, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services publishes information to help enrollees understand the differences between being enrolled with a Medicare Advantage plan versus enrolling in traditional Medicare. Many states make similar information available about their Medicaid managed care programs. Second, don't hesitate to ask questions. If you feel like you're not getting the care you need, talk to your healthcare provider or call the Enrollee Assistance Line for your Medicare or Medicaid health insurance plan. Third, if you suspect your plan is stinting on care or not providing the services it promised, please report your concerns to Medicare or your state Medicaid agency. Finally, stay informed about changes in your plan. Plans can change each year, so review the annual materials for your plan closely. The American people deserve to know that the insurance companies receiving more than $700 billion annually in taxpayer funds are working to ensure you receive effective, high-quality care. Remember, you have rights and options to ensure you receive the care you deserve. For complete transparency, the OIG video, I reversed the order of the information. The next clip was at the beginning, as this area describes what managed care is, and I put it at the end so that the highlighted information would get to you first and keep your attention. Are you or a loved one enrolled in Medicare Advantage or Medicaid Managed Care? This is a service model called Managed Care, and millions of Americans and Medicare and Medicaid stand to benefit if Managed Care achieves its promise to deliver high quality care more efficiently. It's important to understand the basics of Managed Care and how it may affect you. What is Managed Care? Managed Care is a healthcare delivery model and an alternative way Medicare and Medicaid patients can get their health benefits. In traditional Medicare and Medicaid, the government covers health care for seniors, individuals with disabilities, and others by paying health care providers that care for Medicare and Medicaid patients. In managed care, the government pays private health insurance plans to provide coverage for Medicare and Medicaid patients, and the plans pay health care providers that care for the patients enrolled in their plan. The government pays an insurance plan, a fixed monthly payment, to provide you coverage for health care benefits. In exchange, plans get to keep that full payment regardless of how much health care you need each month. If you need a lot of services in a month, the plan must cover those costs, even if it costs more than the fixed monthly payment they receive. Or, if you don't need very many services, the plan gets to keep the difference between the payment it got and the cost of those services. Lastly, the second write-up that I've given you in Word and PDF is the Medicare Advantage plans under scrutiny and what SNF providers need to know for annual Medicare open enrollment 2025. This information has excerpts from the OIG website and includes links to all of the Medicare Advantage audits. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Please feel free to call or text me at 617-595-6032. Please also free feel to email me and ask me for any information or webinars or information that you would like me to distill and synthesize. Have a great day.